gentlemen, what I'm going to show you now is uh, a, a few samples. Sorry, I want to show a few samples of readers from a couple years ago. Um, I have electronic copies of these and they're pretty great. Um, so I just wanted to show you a little bit about what some students have done over the years. Um, oh, that, what a treat. Hi, Bobby. If you could put a Bob GIF in your reader submission, you're definitely treating Dr. V well. Way to go, Sam and Charlie. Um, I'm going to just open up their reader right now. Okay. Um, and you see, here we go. Uh, this, so these guys did it as partners. Um, you see the total length down here is nine pages. So that was their total length. Okay. Um, and theirs is about censorship. And so they're writing, um, this is their overall introduction, okay? Um, I'll leave that up here for a moment when you read it. It's a little on the short side, honestly. Um, I will say even great second semester seniors sometimes give me things a little bit on the short side. Um, but nevertheless, this showed some good thought and uh, some good work and these young men's lives did not turn into failures um, because their introduction to their reader was a little short, okay? Um, so this is the part they composed, that's their own. And then now they're gonna take us through and you see this is the introduction they're writing for their first selection, which is from The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. This is the introduction that they, they wrote. And then now they're letting me know here's where the excerpt starts. And this is the excerpt that is directly from uh, Huck Finn, okay? Um, now this intro that they wrote should delve into what were their reasons for including this selection? How does it relate to satire and censorship? Because those rem we remember from the title are the big uh, ideas here, okay? So um, after that short excerpt, they now give us an excerpt from Brave New World, which also was a book that had experienced uh, censorship um, when it was first published, okay? And now they give an excerpt that relates to that, um, Animal Farm, another one, okay? So you're starting to see the pattern here, right? Basically, they write these short intros that explain how this excerpt connects back to their overall thesis and introduction, okay? And then they've got a longer one that's from Slaughterhouse-Five. Now we've got a fun one from Borat, um, which goes to a link. Um, and, you know, I encourage you to include links. You're allowed a total of eight selections, five of those eight have to be text. Um, so, uh, you know, you have as many as three that you can use that are um, links that we can go to. I'm definitely not cl clicking on a Borat right now. Um, and then these guys actually, they, they included something that had been published in The Loyalist um, that had gotten, uh, had gotten some uh, in trouble that was a piece of satire that ended up being censored, which is pretty classic. Um, and here's the excerpt that was printed in um, in The Loyalist. I, I thought it was fantastic. I didn't think it was uh, beyond the pale by any means. And then they've got their uh, work cited, okay? And that's all there is to it, all right? That's all there is to it. They're citing here um, references, the references for the passages that they took selections from, references from um, uh, references from uh, things they mentioned or cited in their interview or in their introductions. And so that I think was pretty good. Oh, and there we got our Bobby again. That's too great. Uh, we don't get enough of Bob smiling. Okay, well done. All right. Uh, I want to look at uh, let's see grants was one I wanted to look at. Okay, his is on aliens here. Uh, percept ethereal foresight, perceptions of the unknown celestial space. Okay, so Grant went ahead and did the double spacing. I prefer single spacing, but you know, honestly, you're not gonna get too upset. You can see here, that's why his runs so long. Um, most of these didn't go to 18 pages, but if you double space, it's gonna go long, okay? So Grant did his as a solo. And here he's got his introduction, which now we've seen uh, was two full pages. So if he'd single spaced that, it probably would have been at least a full page. And it's laying out, you know, the, uh, the basic idea of his reader. Okay. And now he's going to 
Uh, Grant did a little bit more style, and I like this style. Even a straight line is pretty cool um, with a title and a year. I mean, that looks pretty, you know, that looks pretty um, nice in terms of design. And then he has his introduction that he composed here, and then now he gives the excerpt um, from the Tablets of the Epic of Gilgamesh, okay? And so he gives that. Um, that's a little over a page, which is about the maximum, okay? Now he gives another selection. And then uh, he gives uh, his introduction here. So I know that whenever I see that line, this is a nice design element Grant used here. Whenever I see that line, it means that um, a new selection is coming, right? And I get the title, the year, and then I get the, um, the introduction and then the selection itself, okay? And I know that this this heading here is the one that indicates the selection is coming. So instead of saying excerpt, he's actually titling it by um, what it is, okay? Um, now he's got a selection from Voltaire. Oh, I guess I see what Grant's doing here. He's he's like 1.15-ing his excerpts and doubling his uh, intros. I would just single space the whole thing. I would just single, or 1.15 if you want that breathing room, but I think that's fine, okay? So now we continue to go through here, um, and uh, oh wow, now we get a beautiful image. That's why I wanted to uh, to look at this one because I remembered it having some images. Um, so here he is, including an image um, that that's the engraving, the Flammarion engraving from about 1800. Uh, he, Grant gives his overview of it here and his introduction, and then he presents it. One of the nice things about making these kind of readers, guys, is you know, if you find a high quality digital image, it's really easy to insert in your reader and you're allowed, you know, multiple um, images or videos or whatnot. So like, don't be shy about using that. It doesn't have to all be text. Now we've got a new selection coming. This is from Jules Verne, Around the Moon. Um, and here's the selection. And we get another one, Carl Sagan. Wow, this is some cool sci-fi. This was a really interesting one to read. And I, I gotta say, this is another reason why I wanted to open it because, oh wow, we got something from uh, Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Wow, images from the Hubble. Jeez, see that's really interesting, guys. I mean, here I am, I'm learning something um, in this reader because, you know, I didn't know about, first of all, I'd never seen that engraving before. That was news to me. So good for you for finding that. I did not know of Lucian of, of Samosata um, wrote early, like se for second century AD science fiction. I had no idea that existed. I know a lot about Jules Verne. I had never read the All Around the Moon. And so it was neat to see a little bit of that. And certainly I, I had no idea of Voltaire. Um, had that connection, okay? Um, so uh, so that really taught me something. I, I thought this was a, a really extremely well done one. Um, had he done the single spacing throughout, this probably would have come in closer to like 10 or 12 pages. So that's um, probably more what you can expect. But I thought that was pretty good, guys. Like, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let me look at one last one. Sorry, I'm giving a little too much uh, weight to the Stanford guys here, but you know, sometimes they produce, even though they're clearly not following my spacing directions. Um, but this is, uh, this is Colin and Jordan. Um, I don't think Colin, Colin's not at Stanford. I'm pretty sure he's at Northwestern. Um, but in any case, uh, Jordan and his partner Colin did this. They are looking at fate and free will. An Intersection of Metaphysics, human, Humanism, and Existentialism. Oh, wow. I'm interested. This could teach me something. Um, so here they go. They, uh, they explain in their intro what they're going to pick. Um, now, uh, now they pick one from Oedipus. They, and here's the introduction they wrote. Then they give the excerpt. Um, they give an image to supplement the excerpt. That's pretty cool. Um, now here's something from the Aeneid, uh, which of course is Roman and gives its own perspective on fate and free will. Now we have lines from the Aeneid. Um, Temptation of Jesus. This is from one of the Gospels. 
Okay, beautiful image there. Wow, this is some nice stuff. Now something uh, Michelangelo's David. Nice reproduction there. Um, again, like this is a pretty high quality reproduction. Um, Metamorphosis. And they have their intro and then notes from underground. If there's, and I'm glad I picked this one too, because this had something that I, um, I remembered. Um, if there's one thing I would encourage you to venture beyond is don't let your selections be so dominated by ones that we did in class, right? So of the selections here, we've got the Dostoevsky, the Joyce, the Kafka, the Sophocles. Um, so that's one, two, three, four of the major selections. And that felt a little bit heavy on um, the selections from our class. I would probably say that's a maximum. I would aim maybe for two or three from our class. You're given complete freedom and liberty to do anything you want with this. So don't feel like you have to um, stay close to the class, okay? Oh God, and here we go with Odal, man. The one he submitted. Oh, geez. I remember this. Yeah. He somehow, after he submitted it to turnitin.com, he submitted it with the new title, Hot Cop 2, The Legend of Johnny Sims. Sins. Which I, you know, not knowing much about, went ahead and highlighted and searched this. And, uh, oh my God, you shouldn't search that. And if you do, you should delete your cookies. And if anybody sees Odal ever again, they should give him a hard time about that. Okay? But thank you for uh, following some of those examples. I have more I can show you. But those are the basic ideas. Okay? You're putting together a collection. And you are um, you're writing the introduction to the overall collection. And then the individual introductions. Um, and then that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay? Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.